Aloha and welcome back to the channel. Uh, really quickly, this is a video I didn't know I was going to be making. It's a video on a new tool or new add-on that I'm playing with. And that is over here. And it is the Say Intentions AI software. Uh, there's a They have a free demo period and after that it's like $30 a month. Uh, now, <clears throat> I did sign up for it. I am playing around with it. Uh, it's <clears throat> it basically takes over for air traffic control. If you've played around in Microsoft Flight Simulator, you probably hate the air traffic control that came with it because by default, it's just not good. I've had nothing but bad things with air traffic control. It's the, that's built into the game. It's flown me into mountains. <coughs> it's just given me all sorts of horrible, horrible instructions. So, Every, since I've seen these things coming out, I really wanted to try them. And uh, this one here, <clears throat> it's been great so far, but it was definitely eye-opening for me. Now, if you've watched my channel, you know I am not a real pilot by any means. And I relied on the air traffic control in Microsoft Flight Simulator. So you may think you know what you're doing, but you're just clicking on a response on the screen. You don't really know. And <clears throat> unless you're somebody who is already gotten into this hobby or you're a real world pilot and you know what to say it, it can be a little <clears throat> i don't want to say confusing i'll say intimidating right so if, if you're getting on like that sim or pilot's edge it's very normal to be nervous <clears throat> when you're talking to an actual person <clears throat> and for me that's been that's kind of stopped me from using those networks is that i know i'm a novice i know there's a lot I still need to learn, and the, the the concept of being wrong, well, who likes being wrong, right? I mean, nobody likes it. Um, well, this software kind of takes that out of it a little, because you're only talking to the computer, which is kind of nice. Now, uh, I will tell you that in this first blurb here, and I'll go over it, it was the AI that was wrong. So I had my uh, my tablet with my electronic flight bag up for my local airport. I actually turned off my my taxi ribbon, which many people have seen me with my taxi ribbon on videos if you've watched. Well, I turned it off, and I was like, "Well, let's add a little bit of realism." <laughs> so I requested uh, parked at ramp one with X-ray. Request taxi VFR flight following, and they gave me the following: Skyhawk November seven zero one Lima Juliet. That was my aircraft. Uh, Groton New London Tower, uh, uh, Groton New London Ground, uh, Taxi Runway 33 via Alpha Bravo, hold short runway 33. There's no Alpha Bravo. You go from the ramp area to Bravo, and from Bravo, you go over to <clears throat> Charlie, then Delta. And when you hit Delta, you're crossing runway 33, like this. So you come down via Bravo, hit Charlie a little, go to Delta. So... I read back to the AI, request you clarify taxi. I do not have Bravo going all the way to runway 33. I have Bravo, Charlie, Delta, and Delta being at the threshold of runway 33. Now, I don't know if that's a proper um, airport call out. You know, somebody by all means below, but it was wrong according to what I had. And here's what the AI came back with. <clears throat> Skyhawk 701 Louis Juliet, my apologies for the confusion. Taxi to runway 33 via Alpha, Charlie Delta, hold short of 33. So they actually incorporated the Charlie and the Delta part. And the only way to get to Charlie and Delta was Bravo. <clears throat> then contact Tower. So the AI actually responded to my correction of the AI, which I thought was pretty cool. <clears throat> so I get down there and I'm holding short. Uh, and <clears throat> I actually... Uh, I got to a point where in the taxi, <clears throat> run, um, taxiway Delta crosses runway 23, kind of like this, you know, I'll call this Delta, call this two, you know, 23. And I, they did not give me permit permission <clears throat> to, to cross the uh, runway 23. So I, I held short, even though they didn't tell me to, and I requested permission to cross runway 23. And, and I did that from the tower. 
Um, then I got back uh, Cessna holding short of runway 23, crossed runway 23, continued taxi um, via Charlie Delta, advised when ready for departure. So that was pretty, that was pretty impressive from the AI to come back to me like that. <clears throat> um, now then, uh, now again, not a real pilot, so I, I'm sure I screwed up a bunch here. Um, I requested, uh, to, uh, take off and requested flight following. Now I had filed a VFR flight plan with Microsoft Flight Simulator, but it didn't come in to say intentions AI. So <clears throat> say intentions came back to me, um, hold short runway, you know, basically they said line up and wait on runway three, three advise your requested altitude and destination for flight following. So it was basically like, Hey, you didn't put anything into our software. So what do you want? <clears throat> and then I requested uh K at 2,500. And then they came back to me and approved it and just told me that, uh, uh, report to report when I was leaving the pattern and squawk VFR. Now, the weirdest thing on here for me was, let me see if I can find it on here. Yeah. So I was squawking VFR because I was told earlier squawk VFR. <clears throat> and then right here, um, I show your squawking 1200, verify you were squawking 5602 mode Charlie. So it seems like the AI wanted me to, to shift, but it didn't tell me to. So it verified it and I wasn't doing what it wanted. So I verify, so then I, I dialed it in because if you've seen my, my, my Cessna, you know, I've got a transponder down there. So just 5602 mode Charlie and <clears throat> Now, in, in this area here, there was also another glitch, and it was on my part. And uh, let's see if I can find it here. All right. So, at one point, I had, uh, I had, I dialed over to the right radio frequency, but didn't actually shift which radio I was using. So I contacted Groton Tower or basically I contacted the wrong person and they just told me, hey, you contact them on this other frequency. So, and it was just because I didn't shift my radio. So that was 100% on me, but they caught it and they just told me, hey, go to that other frequency and here's who you should be talking to. <clears throat> And a couple times it actually asked me what my intentions were on my VFR. So when it said say intentions, I just said my intention was VFR to k -10. Um <clears throat> And I just got a Roger out. And then down here again, uh, Providence Departure or Providence Center shifted me over um, to 5332, but never told me to shift. They actually said, hey, why aren't you doing this? So I shifted, you know, squawking 5532 transponder set to mode charlie uh then they told me to ident so i i idented because if you watch a video i have on the transponder i built the uh the thousand digit if you push that it also becomes your ident and my little light goes on well the cool thing here was i pushed my ident button my red light comes on that shows i'm i've got the ident the second they started talking and, and talking back to me and saying that uh, they had me, uh, contact established. My ident light went out, which I thought was kind of cool. Um, and then I just continued on. Um, and it, it does feel like you're talking to somebody. I, it, it's, very, <clears throat> it's very natural. Um, I'll do a video with it, but you'll have to not bash me for any mistakes I make because again, I am not an expert by any means. I'm not <clears throat> a pilot. I'm, I've barely started, <coughs> excuse me. I've barely started ground school stuff. So I'm definitely not an expert, but they, uh, they were good at the responses to me. 
Um, I even told me where I was at one point. Uh, Skyhawk 701 Lima Juliet radar contact established three miles northeast of Gallup Farm Airport at 2300. Continue via far flight to KTAM. Very natural. It came across. The voice was not robotic at all. Um, and at one point, I, I, you know, I just gave him a Roger thank you. And their response was, you're welcome. Have a good day. <clears throat> Um, on, on the other point, uh, report leaving the frequency, have a safe flight. <coughs> now, something else on the settings I'll show you here is, there's my call sign, and headset, there we go for that. Now, I have the multiplayer chatter in M uh, Microsoft Flight Simulator disabled. I'm just starting out with this, so I didn't want a lot of random chatter out there, and I didn't want to hear anybody else talking. I just wanted it to be me. Um, and that was very easy to do here. I did not go into here as far as uh, the experimental stuff. Didn't even try it. Um, but here's my always on top that I mentioned. And I am in student pilot mode. And the other part that I'll, I'll bring up as a cool thing the first time I lit this software off, <clears throat> when it came back to me as Groton Ground, because I'm in Groton, New London area here, when it came back to me, I was like, hey, Scott, we've been told you're, uh, you know, you're a new pilot, you know, welcome. Oh, well, that's kind of cool. It read my name off and it welcomed me in, you know, and the AI, again, it sounded like a person. It was very natural. It, it didn't feel like you were talking to the computer. Um... <clears throat> So all in all, I, I'm sure that if you're a real pilot, you're going to get a lot more out of this than I do. I, I'm having, I'm learning a little bit. I'm having some fun with it. And when I fly, I'll show you how I had it set up here. I kept it about like this. And then I moved this up here. The reason I moved it like right up here is it's out of the way of the window. So it's not interfering with any of my visuals. And when you hit the transmit button... I don't know if I can do it right now. Let's let's see if I can do it. If I can go over here and get on the button. And I just knocked my headset down. Here it is. All right, if you transmit, you get this little spool. It goes red, and then you get this little uh, this little circle that goes. And that it shows that your push to talk works, and the little circle hooby do there. <clears throat> it's basically once you say something. It's interpreting what you're saying. It's figuring out what you said. And then it responds. And the responses can take 15, 20, 30 seconds. But it's still pretty good. You know what I mean? Because in the real world, some responses take longer anyways. So I am impressed with it. I like it a lot. I know it's the pricier option out there. Like I said, right now it's like 30 bucks a month. Um, and, but right now there is no real competition for this yet. When Beyond ATC comes out, they just revealed their new pricing model. I'll probably buy that and try that. And if it doesn't work, I'm only out 30 bucks. And if it doesn't work, then I just stick with this one because this one seems pretty good. Now, right now, this guy is only for VFR as of what, March 9th. So, but for me, that's fine because I'm, <clears throat> I'm a novice. I barely know anything at all. And I have this cockpit behind me that is far, far better than I deserve but it's still pretty cool. It all works well together. And some other nice things about it, it tells you when things are online up here. And it actually gives you what you're dialed into. So here it actually, once I dialed in my, my uh, transponder, it showed me what I was putting into the game. <coughs> it showed me what my COM1 and COM2 were set at. And over here, <coughs> it gives you the information for the, air, for the uh, airport you're at. Now... It only gave that to me when I got close enough to the airport, though. Um, and I don't have a a paid electronic flight bag. I just have Flight Plan Go. And it's good for a flight sim guy because <clears throat> it's got some good information. It has the airport layouts and whatnot. But it didn't give me the ATIS. Um, it didn't give me a lot, of the, uh, a lot of the frequency stuff other than CTAF and approach which is providence um so 
it's good. I, I there are little things I would like to do, like I would like to be able to have have it so that I could pull up those frequencies up here, and maybe maybe that's something you can do that I don't know about yet, but it is really cool. I gotta say, I mean, I'm I'm impressed with it, and it was easy to get downloaded and fired up. You literally once you say you either want to be part of the demo, or you just pay outright, and I just paid outright because I I know I'm gonna play with it. Uh, you download a, a a zip package, a zip file, and you unzip it, and you run it. There's an application you just run, and then you, it takes you through your setups under your, under, your, under your settings here. And what language do you want? Now, it does it in nine languages. I just said United States, but I could have UK, Australia. I, I, I could have thrown in an accent. I'm horrible with accents, so I won't even try it. The only accent I can really do is a Boston accent because that's originally where I'm from. I've killed that accent over the years, but it still lurks in the background. Um, <clears throat> and then, and I showed this before, uh, like identity, uh, and you can enter any tail number you want. Now, for me, November, and, and in the past, on my aircraft, it always just had my nickname, which is Higgy, H-I-G-G-Y. Well, I changed that to be more, you know, flight sim friendly, and it was November 701 Lima Juliet. There's a, there's a reason behind that. 701 is the hull number of the first boat I served on, which was USS La Jolla. La Jolla is L-J, L-A, J-O-L-L-A. -L -L -A. So 701, hull number of La Jolla, L-J, initials of La Jolla. Made sense, at least to me, when I was trying to figure out what number do I use. <clears throat> and you can enter the short call sign and long call sign here as well. Um, I gotta say, I'm ridiculously impressed. Uh, I again, I'm I'm by no means an expert, but if you want to test it out, I think that it's like a it's like a one day free trial, so you can download it and play with it and uh, <clears throat> see if you like it. Um, for me, I'm gonna keep it for the foreseeable future because there's not really another game in town, right? I mean. Until that, until the other AI tool comes out, this is what's out there. Um, and it, this is a beta test, by the way. So this isn't even 100% done, <clears throat> but I am pretty impressed with it. The fact that even when it was wrong, if I called it out, it rogered up and it corrected itself on the fly. Um, I had fun with it, but the weird part is, if it felt like I was talking, I was nervous the whole flight because I, I kept you know, fearing that it would call me up and yell at me for doing something wrong. Uh, so it, it it's definitely fun, though. It was definitely interesting to fly with. I'm definitely going to do more flights. Um, I may throw one up on here. We'll see how it goes. Uh, but yeah, um, Say Intentions AI, I got to say it was pretty impressive. Um, so far, I'm a fan. So thanks for watching. Um, I hope that Gave somebody some information out there, hopefully, on say intentions. Uh, and I'll try to do a flight with it, and I'll show you that uh, maybe tomorrow, maybe the next day. Thanks for watching. Stay safe, and as always, happy flying out there.